Hey traders, John Hal here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you uh, what I believe is a super cycle that's happening right now that has actually that has actually been that has actually happened uh, two times in the last 100 years uh, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the stock market and when it comes to your trading and also investing and where I believe there's going to be how how history repeating itself can give us opportunities and an insight to what's likely to happen moving forward so we can really benefit from uh, so some really big moves. So let's get straight into it. Don't place a trade based on what you're seeing in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Alrighty traders, see that trading course on the link and see that trading course there? I'm giving away free access to that, free membership access, so link in the description there. So the big thing that I really wanna share with you is that as an investor, okay, so you probably heard me talk about this many times if you haven't, as an investor, it is different to trade in the markets. Do not do not be mixing them up, okay? Trade in the market, trading is looking at charts, looking at patterns, getting in on a pattern, having a stop loss, you know, stuff like that, profit target, stuff like that. Investing is all about looking at massive cycles, looking at things repeating, uh, stuff like that, right? And then where things are likely to go based on history, so on and so forth. And so for me, I've always seen, and you probably heard the analogy that history doesn't repeat, it rhymes. Well. I, if that's the case, then, and you probably also, you may have also heard as well too, that um, the further we can look back in time, the further we can look forward. And so the big thing that we wanna see is what's going on right now. What is the big topic around what's happening right now, which is inflation, right? This is inflation here, this inflation number. So if that's the big thing that's always on, it's, it's been the big thing for the last couple of years, then doesn't it make sense to go back to times in the last couple of hundred or last hundred years to see when were the times that we had inflation problems and is there any sequences of events that we can actually start to preempt to start to get into some really good opportunities to buy and hold or short the market or something like that so we could take advantage of the next for the next crash or the next greatest bull run, right? Um, and so that's that's a really simple analogy, right? I think a lot of people they, they try to they try to be really clever when they're trading when they're investing in the stock market. It's like, okay, what has happened in the past is probably going to happen again. So the the thing you can see here is uh, I'll bring up this. This is a Michael Burry quote here. Um, he said, "Inflation has peaked, but it's not the last peak of this cycle. We are likely to see CPI lower, possibly negative in the second half, 2023." And the and the U.S. in recession by any definition, Fed will then Fed will cut and government will stimulate, and we'll have another inflation spike. It's not that hard. So you can see what Michael Burry is saying there, right? And so where is he getting? Why is he saying it's not? It's not. Or it's not hard. It's not hard to understand because he's just. It's it's just really looking at common sense of investing in markets now. Unfortunately, most of you guys that are watching my video right now, most of you that are watching right now you can't handle two or three or four or five or even a week or a couple of weeks in the markets because you're trying to get that get rich quick scheme, right? And I promise you, I was like that as well too. And you're completely missing big moves as well too, right? Now, I'm a both. I mean, I'm a trader. I, mean, I have my trading pattern in that trading course link in the description. Click on it now. Um, I tell you my trading system. I give it to you for free. But as an investor, if you wanna capitalize on big, massive trends that are likely to happen, then we need to sit back and buy and hold for many years as these trends unfold, right? So for example, and this is where some people get really wrong here. I always, I've always said that I believe by the end of this decade, the mining sector would have, would have experienced one of the greatest bull runs we've ever seen by the end of this decade. And people just say, what? end of this decade or the next 10 years, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna wait that long. And that's the big problem there, right? It's like, the thing is big, massive trends for something to make a really big move, it generally takes many months and sometimes many years to unfold, right? So when I say a statement like that, meaning we're going to see a really good, that means from now through to the end of the decade, I believe mining sector, especially the, the GDXJ, let me bring this up here. So the GDXJ is, is my baby in a sense. I'm invested in this and I have been now for quite some time. And the reason why is because I see extraordinary quality moves happening by the end of this decade, which is going to trump the previous high here back in 2011. I said by the end of this decade, 
That means 2025, it could happen. 2026, 2027. By the end of this decade, I see that move coming. I see massive moves coming in the metals and miners, right? Because of what I'm saying here right now. So if we want to be part of that, one of the best things to do is to buy, right? But also not have that, like, get the money, get the money, get the money now mentality. And, and it's, I know it's hard to do, right? Because we always want to, oh, John, what are you talking about? I want to make money today. I want to I want to, I want to trade the market today so I can make money now. So I can go buy myself some cookies, right? I want the cookies, John. Give me the cookies now. I want the cookie now. Uh-uh-uh. Don't touch the cookie. Right, because if you're smart, you get it, you'll get the whole factory that's going to give you the cookie. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to say, right? Do you want the cookie or do you want the factory that makes the cookies? Right, you can have abundance of cookies, or you can have just one cookie. What do you want? Right, and that's the whole analogy within trading and buy and getting in on long-term investments, long-term swings here. So, the whole thing that we're seeing here, right? The whole thing that we're seeing here is why is Michael Burry saying it's not that hard? Well, all he's doing, if we go back to the inflation number here, okay, and we click on the max chart, all he's doing is just looking at simple cycle analysis of what's happened in the past, in the last hundred years, when we've had inflation. Unfortunately, most people, uh, and including myself, until a few, only a few years ago, were only looking at technical analysis and what's happening right now, and what's and and that's always a big mistake, right? Because they think what's happening now is always going to continue, right? And but we know things change and so on and so forth, right? Really good investors go and swing with them with the moat. So if we have a look at that, right? If we have a look at that, and we have a look at, um, and we have a look at the, the last 100 years, we can see that this was an inflationary time, and this was an inflationary time. So when Michael Burry is saying, we're going, with Michael Burry is saying, and, and this is where he's saying it's not that hard, um, but it's not the last peak in this cycle. We're likely to see a lower CPI, positive, negative, all he, and he says a new recess, recession, and you know, and we will have another inflation spike. Now, where's he coming from with that, right? This whole, this, 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 thing, this thing about this time is different. It's not, right? It really isn't. Because as you can see, through the inflationary spikes from there, look what happened. Low, or the high, and then guess what? We had a second high before it came down. High, second high. So history is just repeating itself. There is nothing actually new underneath the sun. If you study Ray Dalio stuff, you would know that there's nothing, not, nothing, nothing new underneath the sun, right? So if we can see that this is very similar to the last last few times we've had problems with inflation, it's been a, a complete, consistent, repetitive pattern. Because I guarantee when we had the 70s going on, right, they were... Th they were they weren't thinking like it's, it's the exact same thing that happened in the seventies would probably would have actually happened back in the forties as well too, right? So we can go through that process um, and and to and to understand that that process there, and so that's where Michael Burry is actually calling for, you know that there's just a really simple cycle. So but if you look at that there, if we go back to the seventies of what was the greatest investments, there are actually two big investments that um, that I see were the greatest investments back from there, right? If we wanna jump on the, the the next that, as we come down now, because we are part of this cycle, if we look at the last 100 years, we're part of this cycle here, right? We're part of this de deflationary period. Deflationary period, deflationary period. And it's after what? It's after the first spike of inflation, first spike, it's again, that's why Michael Burry is saying it's actually not that hard, this is what's coming. So deflation, more deflation is coming in the markets, right? So when we look at this and when we understand this in the market, we can see that we're like that's this is what we're like again. This is and that's why I've always I've, you, I've actually said this probably many times over the last last you know twelve months or so because it's just really history repeating itself. And that's where Michael Burry says it's not that hard. So if we go back to the seventies as an example, we could look at things like um, silver. Or right, if we go back to the seventies and we look at things like silver, look at this here. The last time silver, look at this. This see this move here. That's an extraordinary quality move, right? From four dollars up to forty-eight dollars. Imagine you having options with that. So I'm trying to give you a good bit of a clue here. What I'm looking for in the next couple of years, guys, right? To just turn to make extraordinary quality more zeros on your account. If you know what I'm trying to say, right? Look at that. Look at that silver move there. Just absolutely burko, right? Just went absolutely just crazy. 
So that was silver. And then we also look at gold as well too, right? This is the gold chart. And so this is actually what happened in the 70s towards the end of the 70s, which was what? That was the second dairy inflationary spike. It wasn't, wasn't, the, wasn't the, the boom and the bust first wave and then the boom and the bust second wave. It's the second wave here towards the middle going into the second half of the 70s, which created what? That inflationary. And then guess what? That's when gold really started to make its moves. Make sense? It really started to really gallop some big time and it went from like $80 up to 840. Um, and once again, traders, when you start to see something like that, uh, and it's a matter of, it's like 52 weeks, so it's roughly 52, 52, so that's roughly two to three years worth of time there, as you can see. But again, imagine you having options over this time where the leverage is tr phenomenal. The, ex the extraordinary quality of money that's going to be made out of, out of these markets over the next 10 years, guys, is just going to be that. It's going to be extraordinary. Um, and so that's the reason why, guys, when we're looking at the, the, the massive super cycles that's, going, that's, that's hitting us right now, you can really benefit from it. But the problem is, is that you've got to be in it, okay? And then on the other side of all, on the other side of all that, we need to be in a situation where we can um, then, or I should say, when we're in our trade, we should be able, it's, it's important to be in a situation when we're calm and relaxed and we're just waiting for cycles to happen. Unfortunately, we are all going to arrive somewhere in 2030, right? We're all going to arrive somewhere in 2030. The question is, where will you be? Were you were you uh, running around like a head like like a madman, trying to make a quick buck? Because that's that was me for my first. You know, I've, I've just I'm just celebrating my my nineteenth nineteenth year being involved with the market, and that was me for most of my time looking at the stock market. But now I can see clearly of what's happening now. I have no doubt by by time twenty thirty comes because I'm actually in this cycle now. I'm playing the stock market. I mean, I'm I'm investing in the stock market on the short side. Um, I'm investing, you know, I'm, 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 I'm investing in, especially the most of my investing long term is in the GDXJ, uh, mining sector, and then also silver gold, right? Because of what we saw there. And so if we saw this move here from gold in the seventies, went from a hundred to say seven, 800, and we're at 2000 now, why can't gold be at 10,000 by the end of this decade? Oh, John, that's not going to happen because what? Because your opinion? Oh, okay. So your opinion is valid, right? So what sort of facts do you actually have? Well, it's not going to happen. It's different this time, blah, blah, blah. Okay, history is just repeating itself. We don't need to make it complicated. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own ego. And let's actually just focus on some, some really good things here. So anyway, so this is the big thing I really wanted to share with you today, guys. Um, I think it's important that while we do some short-term technical analysis as I do, and I'm a short-term trader as well, Short-term trader means like I'm in and out sometimes in a few days um, and sometimes for a few weeks. That's a short-term trade, right? Investing long-term is where you're seeing these, what I'm talking about here, and you're continually to build up positions. So when that super wave, well, for when that next, what Michael Burry says, and we'll see another inflation spike, like we have back in the 40s and 70s, when we see that next inflationary spike, the thing that's going to benefit from that the most, which has been the metal, which, which was uh, gold and silver, and also I believe the mining sector, once we're if we're in it and as that's happening right as that's at the, as that boom is happening that's when we can get really rewarded and the the big thing that i find that with a lot of traders is if i go back to bitcoin here and bitcoin people are all over bitcoin 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 but look what bitcoin well again guys we're looking at a weekly chart here look what bitcoin did nothing for like what one two three years did nothing right and then we went for a big move so we can see that there, right? But those people that bought in 2018, 2019, 2022, that'd be, Paul, guess what? You had to wait three years, but then suddenly out of nowhere, we saw what? We saw an extraordinary quality move. And this is what tends to happen, right? And you see this from a cycle level basis is, is that we tend to go up, we boom, we bust, we flatten out for a while. Then we boom and we bust and we flatten out for a while. Look at this here, boom, bust, flatten out for a while, boom, and now we're going through the next bust overall with with that through there and that's the reason why if you have a look at that boom and bust just simple cycle analysis what i just talked through there that's another reason why when i'm looking at my gdxj you can see how look at this here right look at this here we've gone through what 
we've gone through the boom, we've gone through the bust, we've gone through the, now we've gone through the quiet period, what's coming next, right? It's just really not that complicated, guys.